Good morning, Pastor Jay, with your Friday devotion. I'm here in the beautiful Walker Cannon Memorial Chapel, and you'll notice that the Paschal candle is lit behind me. The Paschal candle is a sign of Jesus' resurrection. We, we light it at baptisms because we have new birth in Christ, and we also light it at funerals to remember that he is the light of the world, that we don't have to worry uh, about death. When we're in him, we are saved. We're going to heaven, and that's what's most important. And it, it leads to a question uh, that someone had for our series, one of our members, and I want to lift this up to you. Listen to this. They write, If Judas was designated to betray Christ, does this mean all of us are ordained to do certain things? How does this affect free will predestination? Well, predestination is actually good news for us because the Bible tells us clearly that it's God's intention to bring every person home to him. Uh, we disagree with Calvin. We disagree with the idea that some are you know, destined for uh, perdition and some are destined for heaven. We don't believe that. We believe that Jesus came to call sinners home to God. But I want to share, when you think about Judas, I want to share the passage that perhaps this questioner is thinking of. It's from Mark, the 14th chapter, beginning at the 17th verse. Let me share it with you. When it was evening, he came with the 12, in other words, Jesus. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. Jesus knew in advance. They began to be distressed and to say to him, One after another, surely not I. He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. So Jesus knew who it was. Verse 21, For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. That is a spooky thought, isn't it? That somehow we are predestined to do something. We don't have any control over it. I don't know about that. Uh, the Bible doesn't seem to support that. Uh, Jesus many times says that uh, God is looking for the lost. You know, we know those stories of the lost coin. Uh, we know the stories of the, of the pearl hidden in a field, the lost son, the prodigal son, right? And so we know that God is seeking the lost. And that God's will, as we read um, in the book of John, is that all people come to faith. Uh, that's God's will. That's God, you might say his predestination is that he wants everyone to come to faith. And he, he sent his son Jesus to die for all sins. Now, maybe a way to think about this, um, I heard this, saw this somewhere about a card game. And you're dealt your hand, right? You can't control the cards you're dealt. You can't control those cards. And yes, Judas, we learn, was predestined to betray Christ, right? He's dealt this hand. But what does he do with the hand? How does he play it? Well, he betrays Christ. You know, the devil's in him. He does it. But then afterwards, what does he do? He takes back those 30 pieces of coin, of silver. He throws them down in the temple. Um, another account says that he buys a field with it, which fulfills Scripture. Um, but what does he do? He goes out and he hangs himself. Um, Think about the difference between him and Peter. Uh, Peter betrayed Christ. He ran off into the night crying. Uh, he was a coward. But what did he do? When Christ came to him after the resurrection, he said, Peter, feed my sheep, and do you love me? And Peter said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And so Peter came back with confession. Peter came back with, hey, I want to do better. Uh, I want to be with you, Lord, again. I, I messed up, but I want to be with you. And Judas, on the other hand, despaired. Judas committed suicide, never turned back to God at all. So he was dealt that hand. Uh, he was predestined to do that. Maybe we're predestined to do things. I don't know. But, but, it's what we do with that hand that matters. Uh, when we make a big mistake, do we turn back to God? Do we seek forgiveness? Uh, so no, we do not believe as Lutherans that some people are predestined for heaven and some people are predestined for separation from God, if you want to call that hell. No, we don't believe that. We believe that each person, through hearing the gospel, uh, can come to faith and be a part of this wonderful family. We know that, right? Because we're sinners and God has reached out to us. It's not about how good you are. You can't tell by looking at someone whether they're saved or unsaved. Um, it is all about God's grace. That's why Jesus came. Think about it. If people were predestined to one or the other, uh, why would Jesus even have to come? Why would he even have to die and rise again? No, that's for everyone to see and to play the cards they're dealt. Maybe they've got a bad hand. Maybe it's not the best hand, but guess what? They can turn back to God and they can say, I love you. I turn to Jesus. I love Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. 
and you promised to save me. So that's really good and comforting news for us Christians today. So let's have a prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that you love all humanity, that there is no good or bad person. There's just people. And Lord, you love each and every one of them. You love us. And Lord, as we look to Christ and in trust and simple faith, we are promised eternal life. We are promised that place of blessedness. So Lord, don't let these doubts creep into us that somehow we've been predestined for something different. It just isn't so. And Lord, we ask you today to continue to receive our praise, to continue to guide us by your Holy Spirit so that we can be your people as we walk toward the glories of heaven. We ask all of this in the name of the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our friend, Savior, and Lord. Amen. Well, God bless you. I hope you've had a great week. Uh, the series continues. The series continues this Sunday. We're going to answer some more questions that you asked. And uh, you can uh, worship online at ctklutheran.org, or you can come here in person at 9 a.m. and 11.15. So I really hope to see you this coming Sunday. God bless you.